I bid you all good morning, good evening, and good night wherever you may be watching this transmission. Australia's economy will collapse in Q2. It, it will collapse. I think it has collapsed. I think it has collapsed a long time ago. They kept it going by bringing in rich investors and laundering money through via casinos and real estate. They've been keeping this going and running a lot of bank scams, lots of banks not basically policing their own kind. And you, we saw what happened with Westpac and all the other big banks there. Absolute disaster with the with what's 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 been up unfolding, and then they had the the um, the Royal Commission come in and started looking at things and seeing they, they barely scratched the surface the amount of fraud that was made, and now they're announcing Australia's economy will collapse in Q2. This is from the Financial Review. Let's look at the markets real quick here. The all ords down 532 from last night. It's morning here in the West. Uh, five uh, it's sitting at five thousand. Uh, 58, it's going to keep going, people. The ASX 200 down to 5,000. We're going to see those in the 4,000 territory this week. The Australian to U.S. dollar is falling. I said we're going to see a 60-cent dollar this week. I've been saying this for a while now. Oil at $28 a barrel, down 283. Gold down 14.92, down 24.60 uh, uh, on spot. We got Bitcoin getting hammered big time right now. Uh Crypto 200, get down five points. Australian to Euro, no one cares. Australian to New Zealand dollar on par. Both currencies are falling to the U.S. Uh, the, N the NZX 50 is finally below the 10,000 mark. It's at 9,476. I think it was at the high nines before the weekend kicked off. I think it was, if I don't remember. If, yeah. And then we got the NASDAQ and FTSE. We already know what's happening with those. And then we got the Hang Sang down another almost 1,000 points at 23,000. The Nikkei is down 429 upon closure last or last night in my time, yesterday their time. So thus far, thus far, the Morrison government has presented the Kovi outbreak in mutual inclusive terms according to the plan. We can protect the health of Australians while keeping Australian – Australians in jobs and Australia businesses in businesses. Unfortunately, this is not the case. The plan will need change. The sooner it does, the better. There is a grim logic here that we are reluctant to unpack, but we know from our vantage that it will it will uh, predominate in, uh, in months ahead, both financial markets and in the public uh, pu public policy circles. Guys, you know they're entering flu season right now in Australia. Uh, sorry, flu season is going to kick off in three, four weeks when fall kicks off there in Australia. It's going to be summer here or spring here in a couple of weeks. In a week, it's going to be winter coming there. And you know what? They haven't had such rosy, warm winters lately. So, the conclusion is straightforward beyond the chronic global shortage of testing equipment for COVID. Many countries will soon face an exhaustion of available medical infrastructure for those cases deemed as severe. These cases will be heavily skewed to early cohort uh, where the observed case fatality rate is much higher. So selective treatment protocols will be deployed as we have seen in Wuhan. Uh, Lomb uh, and Lombardi, Lombardi. So it will be said that most cases of the COVID are mild and do not require admission to an intensive care unit, ICU. That is true, but ICU capacity, inclusively defined, clearly looms as binding constraint in terms of policy formulation. So Australia is just like Canada. They haven't, um, they haven't really, um, invested in the infrastructure of schooling and, and hospitals and stuff. Oh, but we opened a university, Mike. Yeah, it's for profit. Universities are for profit. Universities are to bring rich investors, kids in, to spend money in your country. That's what it's for. So here it is, guys. Um, the ICU capacity by, by country. So that's beds per 100,000 uh, for 100 for beds per 100,000 people. The U.S., I guess, sits in front with 33.6. Uh, That's 350 million population. That's actually not bad. Germany right behind. Belgium, Korea, Canada. Canada's a 13.5. And uh, Italy is 11.88. France, 9.3. Australia, 8.9. So 
Uh, Australia is in between France and Netherlands, so could it be better? Sure, with the amount with the amount of um, sell offs, with the amount of portions of their water, their mines, with the amount of portions of the country that's been sold off to foreign investing, they should have at least accumulated some sort of wealth in the background, at least. So let's go here. Stocks tumble. Treasuries rally on virus worries. Market ra uh, wrap up. So this is from today's date. V volatility tightened its grip in global financial markets with U.S. stocks plunging as much as 11%. Treasuries rallying and Brent crude sinking below $30 a barrel as economic activity around the world slows. Uh, hyper turbulent financial markets continued their wild ride as investors tried to assess the likely extent of the economic damage after countries around the world moved to combat the virus, spread by virtually shutting down all social activity. The Dow Jones Industrial Average loss from its record uh, reached 30 points. And uh, right here, the Fed. Where is it? The Fed and other central banks have dramatically stepped in efforts to stabilize capital markets and liquidity. Just throw the country in further debt. That's all it's going to do. Uh, yet, the moves have been so far failed to boost sentiment or improve the rapidly deteriorating global economic outlook. An international monetary fund pledge to mobilize its $1 trillion lending capacity also had little impact in the markets. The yen rebounded on Friday plunge after Fed and five counterparts said they would deploy foreign exchange swap lines. Australian equities fell almost 10%, the most since 1992. Wow. And I think the next fall would be, if the next further fall would be 1981 or 82, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, in Australia. Even after the Reserve Bank of Australia said it stood ready to buy bonds for the first time and announcements that sent yields tumbling. New Zealand's currency slumped after emergency rate cuts by the country's central bank. Again, New Zealand's same thing. Meanwhile, China reported on Monday that output and retail sales tumbled in the past two months. You don't say. And they're trying to say that everything in China is good now to come back. Yeah. Uh, how will COVID affect the Australian real estate market and the house prices? Guys, don't forget to join us Wednesday nights for Trends in the Housing Market, where we talk economy, real estate, job losses, unemployment. It will lose momentum and there could be falls, but it will be a short, uh, sharp shock. So they're thinking it's going to be short and sh uh, short, sh short, sha, sha, sha. short, sharp shock. Try saying that fast three times. It's one of the most Googled questions since Kovi output began. How would a Kovi affect house prices? The bottom line is that it will be negative. Prices will go down. People up until now have been talking about the property market developing a bit of a, a momentum with the interest rate cuts we had last year and easing of credit conditions so they cut back on the stress testing they cut back on everything they had three rate cuts in australia just to keep more people back on the housing market and the people like 30 years ago or 50 years ago would look at this transmission from 50 years ago watching this into the future so let's take a glance into the future they'll be like why is australia so heavily dependent on their housing market let it crash they don't know or they could never fathom that a majority of the money um, of any wealth or debt or IOUs is all tied into housing. They're like, well, I worked in a mine for 30 years in Australia back in the 30s and 40s and 50s and blah, 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 and I made things work. It's like, no, things have changed so much in a way where the, the workers aren't or the, the, the infrastructure the infrastructure supporters aren't getting their dues, or aren't getting paid their dues. They're paying 45 bucks for a pack of smokes. Anyways, but the, the reason why the bank is cutting COVID is negatively impacting the economy as a whole. There's no escaping that fact. Yes, the government has released its stimulus package. Who cares? And there may be more physical stimulus on the way, but there are limits to what any government can do. There will be negative effects on employment. It will be short, sharp, shock, 
to the economy. Well, they're, they're keeping the economy kind of above water in Australia as much as possible by bringing in more foreign students, So, which is, which is uh, uh, student loans and all that stuff is good for, for, for the economy, right? It doesn't really help anybody else out unless they're building the dormitories and the schools. Uh, if you're in that sector, you could be doing okay, but yeah. I'm looking what to buy, what I need to know. In this environment, buyers who are in very secure jobs are actually in an in improved position because the overall market is weaker. Covey will take out a group of buyers, uh, those uh, adopting to wait and see the approach or those simply unable to buy due to the, the, re to the reduced income. So you're going to start seeing reduced income across the board, and it's not going to hit well. And you're going to see a lot of foreclosures if people do own. Uh, you'll start to see a lot of families start losing everything. A lot of them bought thinking that these markets will completely keep going up. And that was a massive mistake on their part. A lot of people that bought these homes in the first place needed more credit counseling, not more credits or more, oh, but if you buy a house, you'll be financially secure. That's the biggest lie you could ever tell somebody when they're buying a house. Make them feel good. You know what I'm saying? I'm a property investor. What do I need to know? The weakness it is causing in the economy will accentuate the downward pressure on rents uh, in the short term, and that's something investors need to be uh, consistent of. So, a rebound in 2021? Yeah, if you could find a cure for what's going on, I'm you. No, a rebound that would be too 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 soon. You'll probably see a rebound in 2026, starting to properly. Uh, take on 2024 2024 you'll start to see a proper unless they raise interest rates to eight percent overnight if they did what ronald reagan did raise in, uh, interest rates to eight percent and then boom you start to see everything pretty much rebound overnight but i don't think australia would do that uh Qantas, uh jets bar perm, uh, permit ca cancellations of all bookings to 30 the 31st of may so here it is. Qantas and, Jet, uh, and Jetstar have introduced greater flexibility for customers wishing to change travel plans. Not the Filipino Airlines. They don't let you do nothing. You got to pay like $600 per person to, to rebook or to uh, re, re, rebook your tickets. Following increased travel restrictions being implemented by the virus governments around the world due to the evolving COVID situation. So you're going to see a lot of airlines go bankrupt. But no, you won't. Not in Canada. I don't know about other countries, but our government will bail out these airlines. Our government will bail out these airlines because they need these airlines to continue flying to bring bring in more wealthy investors. With a, with, you think they're bailing out the airlines so the locals could travel? The locals could barely. The locals are two hundred dollars away uh, from going bankrupt. How are they going to take a trip? I say let the like like if you know if I'm looking at this from a business perspective, let them crash. Let, let these things go and solve them. Stop. Stop. Um, hey. Stop looking at uh, bail-ins and stuff and, 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 and implosions and using other people's money to bail out uh, uh, airline companies that they're not going to use. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the companies that the locals don't even use because they can't afford to. It's my son. Right here. Right here. Five years old today. You're not five years old today. You're five years old. I'm five. Yeah, you're five. Not today. Not today. No. All right. And then we have here. Look at me, Donzon. Look. Nada. There's no food there. Woolworths has introduced a dedicated shopping hour. Okay. So we got this uh, toilet, toilet paper wars in Australia are still going on. In a dramatic move, Kohl's is suspending online shopping to anyone other than the vulnerable and isolated. That's good. Uh, Kohl's chief uh, executive uh, Stephen Kane said that they were making the online change so their vans could be uh, dedicated to those in most in need. That's what I like to see. Because a lot of people freaking out over toilet paper down there, it's actually... It's crazy. People, the toilet paper wars in Australia and Canada and parts of New Zealand and some parts of the UK. I don't know. Oh, and the States, of course. I don't know why they're so fixed on toilet paper. In Chinese, they're getting toilet papers. Yeah, they're getting toilet papers. Yeah. Actually, in Wuhan, they have toilet paper in stock, believe it or not. 
they actually have toilet paper in stock in Wuhan, which is really weird. So I think it's a psychological thing that the uh, the Canadians or the Australians started, and it's going all over the Commonwealth. Anyways, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know what you guys feel. Those are not real. They were candy. Whose are those? Candies. Those are your. Those are not your glasses. Anyways, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Lots of love, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Dijadeus, bye. Bye.